remember we were having a discussion, what was it, maybe sometime earlier this year, probably February, I wanna say, and it was, we looked where we had gotten the company already, and it was like, dude, we aren't even scratching the itch of every bike type yet, right? There's still this appetite for these other variations of products, and we've kind of grown this company and this community to this size, and we've done it all just with these 20 inch tire bikes. And then it started the conversation where, you know, if we were gonna be willing to flex that up and try out a new tire size, what would be the first one we do? And we saw, you know, this huge opportunity in this off-road 26 by four inch category, right? It's one of the biggest categories of all of e-bikes, but it is a part of the industry where there's not really that standout performer yet. But the question was like, how do we do that, right? We, we can bring our scale and our pricing uh, power, but what is gonna help us stand out? And I think that's when the discussion of, should we set a new standard, a new safety expectation, raise the bar and use some componentry that others aren't touching. Yeah, I think one of the things you you hit on there too is, you know, going from the folding bike uh, style with the 20 inch wheels up to a 26 inch wheel. One thing that we're known for is being fully assembled, right? So we build bikes, not the customer, right? And so going up to that 26 inch wheel size, I mean, you can see the bike behind us here. I mean, it's just an absolute behemoth and fitting that in a box that FedEx is actually willing to ship is uh, is a tall task. That, that was a tall task at the beginning. Our minds immediately went to, well, what if we can do a through axle? That's the, basically the one assembly step with this product, right? Is you, you get the bike, uh, you throw that front wheel in, you tighten up that front through axle, and yeah, that's the only assembly required. So it's literally under a minute you can be assembled and, and riding. So there's this huge appetite for that larger wheel like you already identified. Um, but standing out, I mean, you really have to figure out, okay, well, there's the riding position, things that it's very hard to communicate that to a customer. So then you get boiled down into the components. And we know that components for our products, our customers love. They're used to the display, they're used to the button pad, all these things, the quick release pedals like on the Expedition. But then we really baked in the fork, you know, and that's really the marquee component for this bike. And I think when we had a lot of the media out and we were talking about this, even with people during the design process, they would ride the bike with the fork and be like, wow, it just like yeah. world of difference between what they typically ride or have seen from, you know, others in the industry. Well, you guys kind of helped me understand was the, you know, EMTV safety standard um, and how that was something that is very prominent over in Europe and is a bar that you have to meet. But here stateside, it's not that way, not yet at least. And so, you know, we kind of elected to take that on ourselves uh, in order to meet the ISO 4210-10 EMTV safety standard. And we can engineer the frame uh, in order to pass that testing and everything. But it's really on the suspension side, it can only be done with collaboration with brands that have been been around for a while and, and are at the pinnacle of engineering. And so partnering up with RST and getting the RST Renegade fork um, on our bike was, was obviously crucial in order for us to uh, meet that standard. And from the jump, it, that was an important part of uh, the consideration when specking it, but you know now the customer gets the full benefit of a fork that you know goes for about four hundred dollars on their uh, X Peak bike, and I, I think that's just super sick for them. And one thing that you uh, enlightened Levi and I on is in Europe, um, as soon as you call a product off road you actually have to pass the off-road standard, right? And here in America, that's not the case, right? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. I think when we say off-road, it kind of comes at liberty from a lot of people or you know, just the general customer base of like, oh, well, I could just ride the bike off-road. And it's like, well, actually, like from a, a safety standpoint, let's make sure that we cross those T's, dot those I's and say, okay, let's follow what it is that ISO 4210-10, as you guys had said earlier, like there is that standard in the United States. There's the EN15, 
25194, which is in Europe. You know, there's a lot of um, similar tests that happen between those two standards. And we really wanted to look at all of ISO 4210-10 to say, you know what, we, every single component, every single aspect of the product was taken into consideration to pass that standard. Um, so we've, we've tested both in-house, we've done, you know, third-party testing. We have all the certifications say this product is safe for off-road riding. When it leaves asphalt, leaves tarmac, whatever you want to say. Yeah. And I think it's important to, to talk about that standard. This is the most difficult safety standard for an electric bike that there is. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you're, you're talking about stresses that are going into the frame or into the fork, into the seat post, into the handlebar, the stem. I mean, you're just like the forces that you see off road is, I'm not gonna talk about multiples, but you know, like there's a multiple there of the amount of stresses that are seen and that a product has to withstand, so for sure. Yeah, and what's, what's really cool to me is this is the same safety standard that, you know, companies that are making these super expensive carbon fiber $10,000 mountain bikes, they're testing to the same standard that we are and this product is going for $1,300. Let's, let's drill into a little bit of the insane value. It's almost the, the peak of that ideology, right? When I look at it, it uses a 750 watt motor. It comes standard, standard with a 14 amp hour battery. Uh, you know, it still has a slime in the tires and all those other things that we we like. But then it has a RST Renegade fork. It, it takes significant investment. So it, it, I think this product is really knocked out of the park uh, in terms of value. What we try to do with this product is, as we've done with our other products, is establish a unique lineup of accessories that's going to really complement and you know just expand the the use cases for this thing. And so I really liked uh, our launch video where we had Chris out there, uh, Bike Tech Chris out there fishing. We have a fishing rod holder on there. So the two frame styles, right? We've got the diamond frame, which is that traditional step over, and then we've got the step through. And really we're trying to figure out for our customers, okay, you know, not everyone's the same height, weight, whole nine yards, right? So the step through is really for that shorter rider, it's much lower step through, so the customer can get on and off much more easily. And we've got the more traditional diamond frame, a little bit more, you know, edgy, let's say, a little bit more aggressive, um, goes with it, scratches, scratches a different itch for the customer. And I think that's really one of the things that we tried to highlight, that there are different size ranges for that step through versus step over, and really trying to fill the gap for all of our customers. What I do like about this is it is more traditional looking, um, and I think there's an appeal to certain people like that who just haven't bought from electric, but have heard great things about our community and, and our service and everything. And so I, I'm really looking forward to bringing those customers into the fold. You were saying for the customer to go from 500 to 750 watt, but like, it's not just, oh, we're, we're making that leap in 250 watts. They're also getting the latest M24, yep. whisper quiet technology, right? Of the motor noise. And I think that's just another thing that customers, when they compare us to the nearest competitor, it's like, we have the, you know, we know that we're the quietest. Yeah, And totally. that's really important when you're out there riding, you know, you don't wanna have this big winding noise happening while you're riding. Yeah, and, and like when we think of feedback we got from older designs of the 750 watt motors we were doing before, that was a piece of feedback was like, oh, this has a lot of power, but boy, is it noisy. And it's like, all right, how do we figure this out? How do we take away the noise, but keep all the power there? And I think the team has done an excellent job. I think one thing we, we talked about the, the, you know, how quiet the motor is, and I want to talk about another use case that, you know, is opened up by that is hunting, right? Like so many people are using these things to hunt. Um, and it, it's because, you know, when you're out there hunting, you don't want to be noticed by the game, whatever you're hunting. And so um, the, the quietness of the motor, those larger tires, when you're out there, you know, in the woods, you got to be rolling over downed trees and rocks and boulders and whatever it is, that larger diameter wheel um, allows you to roll over those things a lot more easily. And then those four inch tires give you that traction, give you that cushion. I love the 26 by four inch tires. Uh, just because those things eat like whatever it is if you are just like going and you like just see a little bit of off-road fun and you see a curb you're just like eh, and you just go over and you, you just you can have as much fun as your heart desires so that's another thing we haven't really talked about with this is this is probably our most comfortable bike to ride on where it's 100%. like you know 
people love our comfort package, but this is like the bike is the comfort package as well, where it's like literally riding on a cloud out there because you've got just the largest tires we've ever done paired with the RST Renegade front fork. I mean, you can air the things down Plus with the comfort package, suspension seat post, giant saddle, it's like you don't even feel like you're riding a bike. It really is incredible. Yeah. What I really like is this is a new battery to electric. Um, one of the frequent pieces of feedback we receive is sometimes it's hard to access the battery on our folding bikes. Uh, we knew that was something we wanted to tackle with this product. And I think this bike does an excellent job of just quick unlocking it, popping it out in just a few seconds. One thing I wanna point out with the battery is some people might think to themselves, well shoot, it's on the bottom, like once I unlock it, isn't it just gonna fall all the way out? And there actually is a secondary locking mechanism, so when you unlock it, it pops out a little bit and then there's another button you can press to get it fully out of there. And um, I agree with you, I think aesthetically it looks awesome. I think from a utility standpoint, it's awesome. And I wanna draw attention to the fact that doing an in-frame battery like this um, on an off-road bike, we've talked a lot about, you know, passing this ISO standard. Um, and when you do an in-frame battery, I mean, you can imagine you're literally chopping off part of the frame, cutting a hole in the tubing and, and shoving a battery in there. That actually makes it more challenging from a structural integrity standpoint to engineer the frame so that it's going to be able to pass the ISO 4210-10 spec. And so um, our engineering team uh, put in quite a bit of thought and effort around the battery, um, doing finite element analysis, doing simulation on the actual frame to ensure that, okay, even though we have this cutout for the battery, it's gonna look awesome, it's gonna function awesome, we need to make sure that we're not compromising on the, the rigidity of the frame at the end of the day. And so uh, hats off to that team, they did an awesome job. Yeah. This is something that is really designed and styled for such a different adventure. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really looking forward to this product.